Hey there pilots, how's it going? This is Nick from Part-Time Pilot doing another video as part of our cross-country planning video playlist. In our last few videos we determined the total distance to climb and then we used our known distances to back out altitudes at each checkpoint during our climb. So we're going to do something similar with descent. A little bit different, we're going to be using our fuel time distance to descend charts and then backing out the altitude is a little bit different with how you have to think about the distance values. So with that said, let's get to it. So let's assume we're descending from a cruise altitude of 8,500 8, to an airport traffic pattern 1,000 feet above its elevation, which is 643 feet. Okay, so we have our cruise altitude here, we have our air airport elevation, and then we have a traffic pattern altitude 1,000 feet above it. In order to use our fuel time distance to descend chart, we also need to get the altimeter setting at our landing airport, the ground temperature at our landing airport, and the temperature loft at our cruise altitude. So the temperatures we will use in our fuel time and distance to descend chart, but you've got to remember the fuel time and distance to descend chart or climb chart the out, they need altitude and a temperature, and the altitudes have to be pressure altitudes. This airport elevation is not in terms of a pressure altitude, it's in terms of standard atmosphere. So we have to convert that into a pressure altitude, and that's why we need the altimeter setting at our landing airport. So let's assume that our altimeter setting is 30.02 and get this from a METAR TAF. The ground temperature at landing airport is 30 degrees Celsius. And then our temperature aloft is eight degrees Celsius. Okay, we can get that from winds aloft. So now we're almost ready to use the fuel time distance to descend chart, but first, like I said, we need to convert our airport elevation into a pressure altitude. So the equation here is elevation plus a thousand times the quantity of 29.92 minus our, our altimeter setting. So 29.92 is the atmosphere altimeter setting, and then we subtract our own altimeter setting, so this can be a negative value. And then we multiply that by 1,000, and then we add that to the elevation. So here we go, we have our elevation of 643. We have 29.92 minus 30.02, so we get negative 0.1. We times that by 1,000 to get negative 100. And then we add, we do 643 plus a negative 100 and we get 543. So now we can add the 1000 feet AGL traffic pattern altitude to get the pressure altitude that we are going to descend to. Because we're not going to descend all the way to the surface. We're going to descend into a traffic pattern altitude. So we do 543 plus a 1000 feet. And now this is our final altitude pressure altitude that we're going to use in our fuel time distance to descend charts so we're now ready to use our fuel time distance to descend chart we have everything we need we have our alt pressure altitude to cruise our temperature at cruise our altitude our final altitude at the traffic pattern and our temperature at the traffic pattern so now remember to use the fuel time distance to descend or fuel time distance to climb charts you have to do it in multiple steps so step one we got to find the fuel time distance values at cruise step two we do that again to find those values at our traffic pattern and then step three we find the difference between those values in order to get the actual fuel time and distance values that we expect to have during that trip from cruise to traffic pattern altitude. All right, so step one, we're gonna find our values at cruise. So we find eight degrees Celsius down here on this axis, and we draw a line straight up until we reach our pressure altitude at cruise at 8,500. From there, we draw a horizontal line all the way through all three of these curves. We have our fuel curve, we have our time curve, and we have our distance curve. At each of those intersections, we draw a straight line down until we get to this bottom axis. And at this bottom axis, that's where we read off our values. So we read off our value for fuel, time, and distance. Okay, so after that, this is what we get. We got about 1.5 gallons for fuel, 10 minutes for time, and 20 nautical miles for distance. Step two, we repeat that process now at our final traffic pattern altitude of 1543. So we use our traffic pattern altitude temperature of 30 degrees, draw a line up to 1543, go horizontal through all three lines, 
draw lines down from the intersections and then record all three values. So what do we get? We get about fuel of about 0.9, time about 2.7, and distance about 4.9. Now, step three is we find the difference between steps one and two. So for fuel, we have 1.5 minus 0.9, we get 0.6 gallons of fuel. For time, it's 10 minus 2.7 for 7.3 minutes. And distance was 20 minus 4.9 to get 15.1 nautical miles. So now we know that it will take a total distance of 15.1 nautical miles to descend to our traffic pattern altitude from our cruise altitude. We can now, just like we did in climb, adjust our checkpoints so that we have a checkpoint 15.1 nautical miles away from our final destination airport. This way, when we're flying, we can know when we reach that checkpoint that, hey, it's time to descend. Now, I just have a note here. I don't use fuel and time values from this calculation. I just did it for the sake of showing you the calculations. I calculate fuel and time later using ground speed. I think it's more accurate, more conservative. So once I have a ground speed, I know how long it'll take. And then from how long it'll take, I use a fuel consumption rate to find my fuel for during cruise and, and descent. Um, but I, I did it here just for the sake of showing you guys how to do it. So we know that 15.1 nautical miles to descend. Let's see what that looks like if we were to to change our checkpoints. So let's assume that we're flying in this direction and uh, our final airport right here is Apple Valley. So we have checkpoint seven, eight, and nine. That's what we plotted at the beginning before we did any of these calculations. So from seven to eight is 19 nautical miles, eight to nine is 20 nautical miles, and then nine to our final airport is six nautical miles so we don't have one that is 15 nautical miles away from this airport here so that would be somewhere around here would be about 15 nautical miles away so so let's let's do that let's make a checkpoint here so we add a checkpoint right here so it's uh nine nautical miles away from this checkpoint and then that is six still six nautical miles away for a total of 50 nautical miles. So we know that when we when we reach right here, that's time to start our descent down into number 10, checkpoint 10, and then down into our traffic pattern altitude. Hope you guys like this video. If you have any questions, please comment below. And thanks for subscribing. As always, please, if you want more information or a ton, a ton of different diagrams like this, making concepts really easy for you guys. Follow me on Instagram at part period time period pilot. Good luck on your studies. Good luck on flying. Stay at it. It gets hard, but keep going, keep pursuing, and uh, it'll all be worth it once you're a pilot. Thanks, guys.